Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we're going to be talking about importing libraries, but specifically, we can talk about third party libraries or modules. Modules is really the term that Python uses when using different types of libraries or functions from other projects. Uh, we've used before uh, random, that's in guess my number, and we're using it right now also in our dice game, import random. We're going to take a look at how to do it with Colorama and mainly the goal of using this module or importing this library is to change the color of the text. So we want to print out some text. And when we print it out, we want to be able to show it in a different type of color and maybe even change the style of the text. Right now we can see it's very basic. This is the default for the console that Python is using. Uh, so we're gonna go first. One way that we can change the text and style without importing anything special using Python's built-in modules. And then we're gonna take a look at a little easier way to change color by importing or using the Colorama module in Python. So let's first take a look at how to just regular change the text color without doing any anything special. No imports, no third party libraries. What we'd want to do is type in front right in front of our string. In this case the string is text and color. Right in front of our message we would type a backslash 033 and a open bracket, open square bracket. And this sequence of backslash 033, open square bracket, is the kind of the code to tell Python that a color segment is coming, a color code is coming. So this is known as an escape code. This is one of many different escape codes, but this is something that tells Python, hey, we're going to have some text changes before you say the phrase, in this case, text and color. So how this works is now we would give it the parameters, we can call it. We'd say what we want to change the text to. And this follows a pattern of style, then a semicolon, then we put in the color, semicolon, and then we'd put in the background, background, color, and then we would end with an M. I'm just going to put an M right off to the side here, but it really should be right up against your last parameter or last number. We're just going to go jump, jump in this get an example going so we better understand what's happening. Let's just say I want to change the color. What we can do, let's just say I just want to change just the color. There is a very helpful tool, uh, a chart. Uh, I'll link in the description where this chart comes from. You can see the website for yourself. Uh, let's just say in this case we want the text color to be green. Well, so the code we would put is 32. So we just type in 32, put the letter M, lowercase, and run the code. Now we see that the text in color has changed, but also everything else has changed, but we're on the right track. We're making sure the color has changed to green. Now if you didn't put this M here, what would happen? Python would kind of start getting confused here. It wouldn't really know where the color code is. So it's kind of getting a little confused. We actually lose the letter T because it's looking for the closing of this code, which we can say is M. This is telling Python, okay, this is the end of my color change. This is the end of my style change. The rest of it to the right is going to be actually what I want to show to the user. That's what we're telling Python in this case. So it's very important to have the M there if you're using this method. Now, obviously everything has turned green. 
So if we want to make sure that it resets, we actually have to do that manually. So let's do an example of how reset would look like. This is the color code, escape code for colors. Then we would type in 0M. So when we have this right here, we have print the escape code and then the color 0M. What we're actually doing is resetting. So we have our text and color green. Then we reset and we proceed with the normal default values, the default colors that whatever the console was before we had used green. Again, if we don't reset, then the rest of our program would just be green. Everything from now on would just be green unless we used a different color, then it would override with that last color. Uh, we can do another example. Let's say we want to do, uh, let's go with purple, 35. So we can do 35M. Uh, let's say purple, so we know which one it is, P-U-R-P-L-E, spelling. So we have text and color, text and color purple. Again, if we didn't have this reset, we would get a green text and color, then we would get the rest of our code in just the last color that we used. Let's do another example, but this time we're gonna use a text style of bold and a background color of red. So how this would look like is following this pattern, the style is first, the color is second, and the background color is last. Let's do it for the second text and color purple. So the style is first, bold, semicolon, the color is next, and the background color, uh, red, we'll do 41, end it with a lowercase m, and we will see what it looks like. So this is text and color purple. The background is red, that's this section right here, that's telling, telling the color code we want uh, background color red. This here is telling it that we want a purple text color. And this one at the beginning is saying we want it in bold. So let's do one more example. Let's do a, uh, a style of three. And we're going to lose our red background. Just a style of three, still colored purple. We're going to see what happens. Style of three, it shows it kind of a, a bit of italics. So you can see how you can change the different types of styles around with this, uh, but this is the pattern of changing text in Python, mainly for console, because when you start going to graphics and graphical user interface, then it becomes a little bit more different depending on the library you're using. So talking about libraries, let's now take a look at how we can use this library called Colorama. Usually we do import import we could say in colorama we're going to be using a module from this colorama called four but if we run this we're going to get an error saying we don't know what this is four is python is having no idea what i'm talking about when i'm saying i want to use four so what we want to actually do is we want to say hey this module four is actually from a lowercase f r o m color rama. If we run this actually as it is right now, we would still get an error from color rama. It says has no idea what color rama is either. So, what we're going to do is put it at the front or the top. Now that color rama is at the top, we have from color rama at the beginning. The froms come before the imports. Now we can see a little something a little different that Python is actually installing this new module Colorama. Now we are able to use this. We still have a little squiggly here. This is kind of just telling us that Colorama 4 is imported, but we're never using it. So let's see how to actually use Colorama. Above we have our colors that we had just used. 
now we're going to actually use Colorama. Colorama. Instead of just having a regular print, what we want to use is the word for, like our import, dot, and we pick a color. Let's just pick red. And we do a plus, and that's now how we are changing text color with Colorama. It's a lot easier than trying to memorize or look up these different types of codes in order to use a style or to use a color. So Colorama is a lot easier than remembering these codes, but let's try to use more of Colorama. Uh, let's say we want to kind of make it a little bit bold, this text. We could do for red, add comma style. So now we're importing two modules. We're importing for from Colorama, and we're importing style from Colorama. Uh, we're still getting a kind of an error here. It's not an error, it's a warning. It says, hey, you're importing style, but you haven't really used it yet. So basically it's telling us that the program is a little inefficient right now, but we're gonna use style. We're gonna use style dot bright. So we have four dot red plus style dot bright plus our actual text, and let's see what happens. We'll see that the text becomes a little bit more bold. So this is a way that we can, again, change the style and the color of the text. Uh, let's go one step further. Let's add background color. For red, style bright, back, dot, let's do white. I'm pretty sure white is one option. So we can see it's very easy to use Colorama. But again, we want to make sure that after we use colors, we use a style dot reset all. It's all caps reset all. This way that we only use Colorama or change the colors of one specific thing, one specific print, and then we make sure that we reset. So I'm gonna use the same method for Colorama right here. For Dysart, right before we print it in the same print function, I'm gonna say for dot black plus Let's do style, style bright too. And I wanna make sure right after I change the color, I want to make sure that I reset. So I'm gonna use this line right here and just put it right down after this print. And we're gonna see what the outcome looks like. So here we have a dice that looks a little bit more realistic. Uh, so I don't really like to use, I don't love using the background color because sometimes, especially I found with Replit, the background console color kind of expands even though we are resetting it. Uh, you can see in the first couple times we rolled the dice, it hasn't been a problem, but it starts to become more of a problem the more we roll. So what I wanna do just like in our intro video, we're actually just gonna make this green. And we can show here another color. So here we have a dice, that's green. And this is gonna be the way that we change our colors in Python. Uh, I'm gonna leave everything here for now so you can continue to keep a look at it. The next video, we will talk more about actually a for loop and how to get more dice rolled than just one. But for now, here is a great example of how to change colors in two different ways in Colorama and also how to import third party modules or libraries, we can call it, different projects in case you want to use something like Tkinter, something that makes your project have some graphics. It's a very popular project in Python. So it's pretty important to know, and also Replit makes it a little easy for us in order to use different types of third-party modules. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and I will reply to them. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you at the next video.